it's time to go through the answers from the previous lessons questions um so same powerpoint same t-shirt i'm just going to go through the answers uh and so you just need to correct what you've done and um wrong and tick what you've done correct so uh, same time. Right, and explain how the resistance of a filament lamp changes when the current through the filament lamp is increased. So if you increase current, I'm going to use I, you get more electrons flowing. Increase the I, you get more electrons flowing. More, more electrons, more collisions. They're colliding with the atoms. Oh, more collisions. Uh, the atoms, if you collide, they vibrate more. The atoms vibrate more. What happens? As they vibrate more, they get hot. And more vibrations carry on. This makes it more difficult. current to pass. So resistance increases. Match the component on the list to each statement. Resistance increases if the current through it increases. We just did that. That is a lamp. The current through it is proportional to the potential difference across it, that's Ohm's law. Ohm's law is about things like resistors. Assuming the temperature is constant. Its resistance decreases if its temperature is increased. If it's talking about temperature, it's thermal, so a thermistor. And its resistance depends on which way round it is connected in a circuit. That is a diode, it's useful for later. Sketch a diagram to show two resistors P and Q connected in series to a battery of two cells in series with each other in the same direction. So we've got two cells like this, and there's a resistor and another resistor. And they are P and they are Q. This one has a resistance of four ohms, and this one has a resistance of six ohms. And the cell is two batteries of 1.5 and 1.5. Uh, what's the total potential difference across the two cells? It's just 1.5 plus 1.5 equals 3 volts. What's the total resistance of the two resistors? It's just 4 plus 6. That's 10 ohms. What's the current in the circuit? Well, the equation B is IR. He wants to know the current, so we do V over R is 3 divided by 10, which is 0 0.3 amps. Easy. And then the potential difference across each resistor. So the rule for current in a series circuit is that the current is the same everywhere in a series circuit. So if we look at any of the, res uh, the resistors, let's do P. So we want to work out the potential difference. So V is I times R, I times R, so I is 0 0.3 times 4, um, which is 1.2 volts. And then we do the other one, 0 0.3 times 6, and that gives you 1.8 volts. And if you add those two together, 1.2 and 1.8, what does it give you? 3 volts, which is the same as you get from the battery, so that's like a little check. Well done. Sketch a diagram to show two resistors, R and S, in parallel with each other and a single cell. So here's my cell. Here's one resistor. And here's another resistor. Um, R has a resistor of 8 ohms. And S has a resistance of 4 ohms. And a potential difference of 2 volts. Calculate the current through R. So... Uh, if this is R and this is S. So what's the rule for potential difference in a parallel circuit? Potential difference in a parallel circuit is the same 
Same in each branch as is in the battery. So you get two volts from the battery. I've got two volts across here, and I've got two volts across here. So V I R is a little triangle for the current. We do two divided by eight for this branch, which is the same as one quarter amps, 1.25 amps. And the one here, four ohms, it's the same equation. Two divided by four is half amps, 0.5. And that makes sense. Look at this one here. This is a four ohm resistor compared to this one here, which is an eight ohm resistor. More current is going through the smaller resistor. Less current is going through the bigger resistor. And that's because, well, again, think of it like an obstacle. If you've got eight ohms of resistance, it's harder for the current to go. So everyone in that branch is going to move slower because the branch itself is harder to get down. But the branch at the bottom is only four ohms. It's a half as difficult. It's, it's easier to get down. So all the current and that can move faster along that line. Um, and then what's the current through the cell in the circuit? Well, it's just 0.25 plus 0.5 amps. The figure shows a light dependent resistor in series with a 200 ohm resistor and a three volt battery and an ammeter. With the LDR in daylight, the ammeter reads 0.01 amps. Calculate the potential difference across the 200 ohm resistor and the current through is 0.01. So again, V, I, R, um, we just need um, I times R, which is 0.01 times 200, which gives you two volts. Um, so we've got two volts across here. Now it says, show the potential difference across the LDR is one volt. Well, if you've got three volts from the battery and we put two volts into the 200 ohm resistor, there's only one volt left to go in the LDR. Calculate the resistance of the LDR in daylight. So we know the, resist the LDR is one volt. We know the current through it is 0 0.01 amps. So one divided by 0 0.01 equals... 100 ohms and again that makes sense because that is half the resistance of the fixed resistor so it's the fixed resistor is twice as difficult for the electrons to get through so they're going to use twice the amount of energy so the fixed resistor takes two volts of energy whereas the LDR only takes one volt of the electrical energy from the battery because it's half as easy half is difficult half is the half the resistance so double the resistance you get double the voltage through that makes sense if the ldr is covered explain whether the ammeter reading increases decreases or stays the same so let's have the little graph of uh, this is light and this is resistance and it goes like this so that means when it's bright small resistance when it's dark large resistance dark equals high resistance. So if you get a higher resistance, you just add it here. Um, this is going up. If you put a more difficult, a harder obstacle in your obstacle course, what's going to happen to the current? It's going to slow down. So the current I decreases. Explain how the resistance of the LDR can be calculated. So, using basically exactly the same scenario before, you work out I from the ammeter. Then, from the ammeter, using that I, we do um, V equals IR for the fixed 200 ohm resistor. So we do A, which we don't know, times 200. Mm. And that will give us a value for the voltage. If we know that value for the voltage, we can then do three minus this value, which then tells you what the voltage is in the LDR. So we now know the current in the LDR and we'll work out what the voltage in the LDR is. If you know the current and you know the voltage, 
you can work out the resistance. In question 5, the LDR is replaced by a 100 ohm resistor and a voltmeter is connected in parallel. So we had 3 volts, but we now have 100 ohm and 200 ohm. There was an ammeter. So this was 200 and this was 100. And then there's a voltmeter here. Draw the circuit diagram. Check. Calculate the total resistance. Well, 100 plus 200 is 300. Check. What's the current through the ammeter? Well, we know the total, that should be ohm, sorry. We know the total resistance, we know the total voltage. V over R equals I, the 3 over 300 equals 0 0.01 amps. Uh, what's the voltmeter reading? So we know the resistance, we know the current, V equals IR, so 0 0.01 times 100 equals 1 volt, which is kind of like it was earlier with the uh, LDR was bright. So the voltmeter reading is 1 volt, and what's the potential difference across each resistor? Well, you've got 1 volt across that, the other one is 3 minus 1 is 2 volts. That's a 2. The figure shows a light emitting diode LED in series with a resistor and a 3 volt battery. The LED in the circuit emits light. The potential difference across it when it emits light is 6 volts. Explain why the potential difference across the 1000 ohm resistor is 2.4 volts. So we've got 3 volts and then if we minus 0.6 volts, we're left with 2.4 volts. Calculate the current in the circuit. Um, so let's look at this resistor here. If we use V over R for this one, the V in that one is 2.4, the R is 1000, which gives us a current of 0 0.024 amps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 0 0.24 amps. And if we worked out the current through that resistor, it's the same everywhere. This is a series circuit. The current in the LED must not exceed 15 milliamps. 15 milliamps, 15 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. That's what milli means. So if the resistor in figure is replaced with a different resistor, calculate what should be the minimum resistance of R. So this is our uh, current. If we want the LED still to light, we still need to have the 0 0.6 volts through that. So we've got to use the 2.4 volts for the other one. So if we do 2.4 divided by 15 times 10 to the minus. No, sorry, my apologies. Done it the wrong way around. It's the resistance we want. Um, uh, the, I, R. Oh, no, that was right. Sorry. 2.4 divided by, and then our calculator, um, uh, 2.4 gives us 160 ohms. If we have a resistor of 160 ohms, we'll get a current of 15 milliamps. So that's the minimum resistor. If we have a resistor of 159 ohms, then we'll get slightly more current, so therefore that would be a bad idea. If the LED in the current is reversed, what would be the current in the circuit? Remember, LED or diodes only allow current to flow one way. So if you turn them around, the current can't flow at all. So C, the answer would be zero amps, because current cannot flow. backwards through the diode. Oh, the last question, and this one is an absolute beast. Design a temperature sensor that will switch a buzzer on if the temperature is too low. You know, explain how the circuit works. So I'm just going to start off by drawing 
thermistor and a resistor in series. Okay, and I'm going to draw my little thermistor graph here. And this is temp, and this is R. So we're talking about low temperatures. So if the temperature gets goes low, that's down here, we have a high resistance. Low T equals high R. Other way around, if we have high T here, we get a low R. High T equals low R. So if we have a high resistance, remember, in a series circuit, the component with the highest resistance takes most of the potential difference. So let's put, let's just give some random figures. So say this is 10 volts and this is 100. If it's got a really low temperature, this might go up to say 1000. And if it's got a really high temperature, it could be as low as maybe 10. So we're looking at the low temperature. If it's a low temperature, it has a high resistance. If you've got an obstacle that's a thousand ohms of resistance compared to one of a hundred ohms of resistance, the electrons are going to give most of their energy to the harder obstacle. So if you put them like this and it's dark, you might get, say, I don't know, nine volts in this one and only one volt in that one. Nine volts in the harder obstacle, one volt in the easier obstacle. Now, what's the rule, the potential difference in a parallel circuit? Potential difference in a parallel circuit is the same potential difference for every uh, in each branch. So actually, if I have my buzzer down here, there's my buzzer. If I get nine volts in this branch, what do I get in this branch? Nine volts. Tick. So basically, in this circuit, as it gets colder, you get more voltage in the thermistor, and therefore, you get more voltage in the buzzer, therefore, meaning at a certain point when it gets cold, you get enough voltage in your buzzer, so it goes off. Pretty complicated, A-level stuff, but I believe in you. Hopefully, there were plenty of things that you could have answered. If you can't answer them all, uh, you still don't understand what's happening, please just email me and I'll do what I can. You can even leave a comment on the video. Um, but I'm sure there are many things you have done. If none of it makes sense, maybe it's time to go over it again. Okay? Hopefully you did well. Love you. Bye.